What's up, everybody? We're getting started soon. Let me know if the music's too loud. Um, occasionally, you will hear the train in the background from where I'm at, so I apologize about that. Um, but just think of the train as part of the move, as things moving along. <laughs> <clears throat> Once again, we're getting started in just a couple minutes. Hello, hello. flagship manager here at the flagship clubhouse at Best Buy Team Tech Center in Roxbury, Mass. Um, this is my live drawing session that I'd like to do with y'all. Um, I believe this is the third in the series. As I did mention, there'll be a loud train occasionally, so I'll let that go. I may pause for a while when the train goes by, so I apologize about that. Uh, but today, with live drawing, I wanted to go over perspectives. So if you can see this tiny little square here, and I hope the lighting's decent enough, decent enough for you all and you can hear me. Um, but this is something I did based off of perspective drawing. And what that is, is um, drawing sort of objects, images, cities, ideas, um, in a 3D perspective on a 2D plane. So. Basically, you have this piece of paper, which is a 2D plane. Um, I want to represent in this square a city or something similar to a city with maybe mountains in the back and a sun on a road. Um, you know, I could traditionally just do um, something like this. What's up? Thank you for joining. So I could do something like this and add windows. This kind of looks like a face. I don't know what I was doing there, but you know, little squares for windows and a sun. And then like mountains in the back. So that would be a traditional way of um, <clears throat> drawing like a city on a 2D plane, but this gives it more of a 3D approach by having a perspective, uh, one, a perspective point that everything is following towards. So if you notice in this, and I'll try not to talk too much and more do a demonstration, um, everything is going towards this particular point in this image here. I just want to keep everything in that same direction so it looks like your perspective is traveling in that direction. Everything, your eye is so, everything in the photo is sort of traveling towards that one point. So that's basically what I'm trying to go for here. And it gets it a really cool effect of depth. Um, so I'm going to get a new piece of paper here. And to do this, um, there are a lot of very professional and high-tech ways of doing this. Um, a lot of, you know, I generally just use a pencil. You can also do this digitally, digitally, which is much easier. Um, but you can also use a ruler. And this might be the easiest way of doing it if you want to be exact with drawing buildings and stuff. Um, but you don't have to use a ruler. You can also use... Ordinary household things or objects like this is just a popsicle um, stick. It's actually an outshine popsicle. Highly recommend these. These are amazing. Um, I also have this random back scratcher here that I could use. It's a flat, long thing that I could um, draw lines on. And again, they don't have to be necessarily perfect, but if I wanted a straight line, I could use that instead if I didn't have a ruler on me. Um, you could also use pen. It's really up to you. 
this up, but I'm going to use this ruler. And those who are good at, you know, math and geometry, you might particularly find this enjoyable, um, as those skills definitely do apply to this. So, for the first new piece, I'm going to also draw in another small box. Um, I don't think we need to use the whole paper for this um, demo. So, I don't really want it to be exact. Um, and it might not look straight from where I'm positioning this. But I'm trying to get it lined up as best I could. And, alright, let's start from maybe here. Oh, so I didn't even press the pencil thing. Oh, well, I did, alright. Let's try this again. There we go. And that was... was four inches. So now I'm just uh, drawing a border of oh, my area that I'm going to work in. Thank you for joining. Alright, now same thing here, just draw this outline. Fill in this last part. So now I have kind of like my drawing area or my canvas. Um, and now what I want to do is find a particular point where I want the image, things, areas in the image or points in the areas, uh, the image to travel. So this can literally be anywhere actually. Um, I think it's more challenging if it's, it, depending if it's lower or closer to the edge, it might be easier in the middle for some or towards the corner but you can get very different effects depending on where you place this particular point in the image. So I'm gonna to try to do what I did before and place it um, right here maybe. Uh, let's go for right here. So I hope you all can see that little point. So now what I want to do is draw my horizon line, which is the line where my point will rest, where my vanishing point will rest. So I draw a line right across there. And this is sort of like a guide, so I know um, where to connect um, the lines and everything too. Now I want to draw something that's going to represent a road, so I want the road to sort of be diagonal because I want, again, everything to be going, traveling upwards like that. So let's draw an arrow to keep that reminder there. You can always erase, erase it later. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, I would draw very lightly so you can erase. The border is dark, of course, but the inside stuff might be very light, so. Let's, I'll probably draw a line here this side of the road and then maybe um, I'm gonna make it a little wider right there. here we go all right I'm not gonna go back and fix that later if I needed to but again this is also like a guide point for where I want this to be um, so now I have my vanishing point horizon line <clears throat> and now if I wanted to I could fill things in draw buildings so I do want buildings to how they were before. Um, in the other image, I may just use the actual ruler to make them a little cleaner. So if you remember this image here, um, 
you know, I'm going to draw buildings in the same way, but the top, the lines connecting the tops and the sides of the building will go towards the vanishing point. That's kind of what I'm trying to achieve. And the more you do this, the more detailed you can get at it, the better things will, it will look. Um, it definitely just takes some practice in lining things up properly. You know, it's something I'm definitely still learning how to do, but I definitely think it's a very cool and unique way of drawing cityscapes and landscapes. And, you know, the, your perspective in seeing this is really just based on your perspective of your perspective of seeing life in general. So how you walk around, how you view um, the buildings when you walk down the street, um, everything in front of you, to the left of you, to the right. It's all based on your perspective. And this is a good way to represent how you view that perspective. So I'm actually just going to draw lines, a bunch of lines through this at different um, lengths from each other. And I can always go back in and erase this. Thank you all for joining. All those who are new to join. So um, what I, this is a recap. I drew an outside box, um, an outside border to represent the space that I'm drawing in. I have a vanishing point here, which is representing where everything is traveling to. And then a horizon line, which the vanishing point rests on, or which is like the edge of the image that I'm trying to design. So I have these lines. I'm going to use these lines as guide to draw the tops and sides of buildings. So this is one building here. Maybe I'll make this one a little taller. So really, I'm just drawing. Um, connecting the lines. Thank you. Appreciate that. Maybe make this one a little bit smaller. Actually, no, I'll make that down here. Okay, so this may look like there's a bunch of lines and stuff now, but when you start filling certain areas in, it will look a lot, uh, it will make a lot more sense. So, um, if you all remember, I typically turn things around when I draw. It's hard for me to draw just having the paper stationary, so I may move it or turn the page. Um, this is a personal preference of mine, but I'll try to see if I can keep this straight for y'all. So, I want to sort of turn this first building into something 3D. So I want to see if I can connect the edge of this building, this point, to here. So I'm just going to line that up best I can. And then connect that. And I want to do the same thing with this edge over here. And I'm making an imaginary point at the end so I can know how far this would go if it went outside the border. Um, so now I have that. Um, I want to draw the edge of the building or the back part. So I'm going to, I don't want to draw that too long. So I, I just drew a line intersecting between the far back of the building to the front or the side, if you want to call it from that angle. Um, so now I have the this this square here, that sort of angled square rectangle, is the top of the building, and I just want to connect this line, which is that edge, down to here, or down to where the sidewalk would be. So I could go back and fix that line, but I don't. This doesn't need to be perfect. I just want y'all to see how um, I would do this. So now I have one building. Um, and you know, you could change the width and the size of the buildings depending on, you know, how you see fit. Having some variation is actually pretty good. This makes it look a little bit more unique. So I'm gonna try to do the same thing with the rest of these buildings here. See what I can come up with. 
and I'm just connecting all these lines um, from where the ends of these buildings are. And you would want to do the same thing over the other side, connecting all these lines to the vanishing point. So I'm going to erase the areas that I don't need now. buildings. They're kind of the same height, but um, you see the difference in depth between them. How you can tell, you know, one's in the front and then you have these two in the back. They're different positions, so it just makes the image look a little bit more um, detailed and full of life. You can even add stuff on top of that. Um, I'm not using a ruler for this part. I'll just do this as an example. Maybe a chimney or something. And this is really just shapes, so I just really do a rectangle. But really getting creative with it is the fun part about it. You can even make layered buildings and just, you know, repeatedly, um, repeatedly draw house, uh, rooftop or parts of layers of buildings on top of them, excuse me. So you would do that in the same process um, by disconnecting the vanishing points. So something like that. Um, and then you could even draw windows if you wanted. And those windows would also connect um, to the vanishing point over here. So let me connect the line. Quite a few lines actually, let me try that. And these lines are only guides to uh, for placement. So you really don't need these in the file image. You can actually just erase them um, when you're finished. So you see I'm just connecting everything at this point. couple windows there, um, maybe add a border up there, get creative with the street, um, and then you can add, um, divider in the street and you see how these are just literally connecting to the um, vanishing point up there and they'll get bigger the closer you get to the bottom as you can see everything's getting smaller to the vanishing point so this is also a good way of representing the depth and perspective in the image but it's all really just everything is connected to the lines. Um, so I could keep adding buildings over the side and just connecting them to the lines here. Small buildings, and then some longer ones.
And then for the vanishing point up here, this actually doesn't have to be a straight line. It could be a wiggly line, um, so it represents like dirt or a patchy road. I think it's actually more interesting if you switch it up. Um, and then I might add some mountains back here. And I just kind of vary how the mountains are in height. Um, so what I do is just sort of like scribble, sort of like a lifeline or varying lifeline, um, and not be so frequent with the same kind of shape, but spreading that out a bit. So now you see how it's coming more complete now, how you have the actual road, um, the buildings, the the horizon line, the image, um, and it's all going to the vanishing point. The horizon line, things above it don't necessarily have to, but if you did want to do it that way, you could, and be a lot, you know, it'd be a lot more creative. It looks really interesting how you can flip it that way. Um, you could also use one vanishing point to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, do sort of a top-down view. So, as a quick example, let me not use the ruler this time and do a very small space. So, let's say I had a vanishing point right in the middle. Um, and here's my horizon line. And then, you know, I have a building up here. And then I have a bit longer building down here. All it is, again, is just connecting those points. So. I'm connecting the edges to that vanishing point and then connecting the lines inside to make the edges of the buildings. And displacing these in different areas um, can make it seem like sort of a top-down view, which is kind of cool. So it's just a many, you know, a few couple of things you could do with perspective drawing, and I think it's really cool. But you could really bring some life to your images, and this is also something, you know, I showed you all how to do um, draw faces last time. This is something you could even apply to that, where if you wanted to have um, your face be at a different angle, um, it's while doing the traditional circle and the shapes you would to start the face, you could change that up and do it at a curve you know, based off perspective, using the vanishing point to connect certain areas um, of the face. So if you had eyes, you would connect them like that. Uh, but this is another example of how to use that. Uh, but let me add a little bit more to this and then stop there. So let me add some buildings to this side. And I'm literally gonna do the same process I did. Uh, by just filling out the building shapes and then adding lines, uh, adding buildings as I'm going up and connecting the lines going forward. All right. So I have this here. See if I can connect that. So just connecting all the points.
So there we go. I think that's fine. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can always go back and fix things based on how you like. But we basically have somewhat of a city, um, or a town, if you'll call it if you want to drove by a town. Kind of looks like a town. Maybe like an old abandoned town. I don't know. Could switch it up. Um, but this is one easy way to do perspective drawing. So literally, you have your space. You really don't need to draw a border at all. Um, do another small example down here. You have your point, um, which is where everything in your uh, where everything in the photo should connect um, connect to. Do all the line work. You have your vanish. You have sorry your horizon horizon line, which is sort of the end of your image, or the top point of your image, or the furthest point. Um, and then you want to connect everything else in your image to that line. So if you, even if you weren't drawing buildings and you were drawing, let's say, trees and you want to switch it up, trees on a road, you know, your trees should still get smaller as they go into the background, but still follow the same pattern of traveling to that vanishing point. And, you know, I could add more things um, if I wanted to. Let's have another building here. And I would usually shade um, the backs or sides of buildings to get a little bit more depth. Um, so if the sun, um, based on where the light is coming from in the image, uh, the light, I'm probably gonna draw the sun up here actually. So I could just draw a circle to represent the sun and I could erase the area outside of the circle, um, the border here and maybe draw some squiggly lines to represent heat from the sun. You don't have to do those, the circle is just fine. Um, just like it makes it seem like the hot's more sun that way. I mean, the hot is more sun. <laughs> the sun is more hot that way. Um, so with the light coming from here, from the sun, um, I want everything in the back behind the sun to be shaded. So what I generally do to shade is just scribble like that color an area in, like you would with a marker or a crayon. I'm just gonna color these back sides. So this just gives it a little bit more depth. And I, at this point, will probably start to darken the outsides or the lines of the outsides of the buildings just to show, just to highlight them a little bit better. And then I could go back and clean up all those other lines that I don't need and just make it a lot better and smoother looking. Um, but this is just a very easy way to go about drawing uh, a scene in one point perspective of a city or actually anything you um, would like to turn it into. And this is also something you could apply in different ways with the overhead view into drawing faces and other various things that you'd like to draw. It works for everything. Um, but it's a lot easier than it looks. It's really just making sure everything connects.
Um, so if you have a ruler and you don't, you know, you're worried about being uneven with it, really just use a ruler um, and go through and line everything up. It actually looks much better when you do it cleaner with the ruler. Um, I took some liberties here of not using the ruler the entire time, um, as I've done this before, but, you know, practice makes perfect. If This would look a lot better with um, using a ruler and not sort of just going into it um, without a ruler, with, uh, with not even lines. But with that being said, if you wanted that grainy effect, I still think that looks great. Um, and I think you all could do, you know, even better jobs of this because this is such an easy techni technique. You really don't need to know how to draw to do this. It's more of just applying what you know and taking lines and taking shapes and putting them together. And that's something I did during a previous drawing session, um, just to, using shapes to build faces and build structures. So if you can take lines and take shapes to put those together based on all that, you can definitely do this. Um, so uh, it's definitely a fun and relieving thing to do. It can also help you envision how you would like to see your community and your city. Um, and I think that's just another fun way and important way of expressing yourself, um, which is something we take pride in in the, the Flash at Clubhouse, having a space where you can express your creativity. And this is just one of the many ways you could do that. And you could also transfer this over um, to a computer and turn it into a digital piece of art, which has so many more techniques and tools available to make this a lot easier to use where you technically don't have to draw. Um, it's more about using your imagination to be creative with the tools available. So um, I think I'm gonna stop here. I hope you all did enjoy this and I hope you all take the time to try this yourself. All you need is a piece of paper, a pencil or a pen and a ruler. You could even do something fun and use crayon or paint, um, but there are, like, are a lot of cool applications of doing one-point one perspective drawing. There's also two-point and three-point perspective drawing, which I'll go over another time. Um, but this won't be the last live drawing session. There will definitely be more. So if you all didn't check this um, or didn't get to see this in time, um, we'll try to upload it so you all have it going forward, and we'll also be doing more of those. But hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you all stay creative. Feel free to reach out to us and check out our website, flashitclubhouse.org. And any questions, we will be open tomorrow for members at 2 o'clock. Um, so please feel free to sign up for a time slot and visit us. And come on down if you want to learn this in person. I will be there. And thank you all so much for joining. Till next time, have a great day and stay creative.